I'm laying roadbed and track on the new expansion to my layout on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Well, I have been excited about the progress that I've been making on the new expansion to my layout in the last several weeks, but one of the most exciting things for me is the idea of getting trains running again. It has been almost a year since I've been able to run trains from one end of my layout through the other since I tore down the old Helix and started the process of building this expansion. So now with the Helix built, with the backdrops installed, uh, the only thing that I lack is laying the track on the main line on the two decks. Well, today we're going to be working on the lower deck. We're going to lay the roadbed and the main line along with its various turnouts. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do all of that, including some interesting work uh, to make some sub-assemblies in advance at the bench work. I'll show you exactly how I do that in a way that may save some steps and make some things a little easier for you as you do your track laying. So let's head on over to that expanded part of the layout and I'll show you exactly what I've got going on. With 13,000 unique items in inventory and one day shipping, Midwest Model Railroad is your one-stop model railroad shop. Check them out at MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. Good track laying begins with a good base. On this industrial area of my layout, I have a subroad bed of half inch AB sanded plywood on which I installed cork road bed. For this application of cork onto plywood, I like to use carpenter's wood glue to secure the road bed in place. I had the track plan drawn out on the plywood already, a step about which I made a video in the past, and I'll link that video in an end screen at the end of this video so you can check that out. I simply applied a thin bead of glue down one side of the track center line, then applied one part of the cork roadbed along the center line and pressed it into the glue with a wallpaper roller. This wallpaper roller is a fantastic tool for pressing down and smoothing out cork as well as track and other items. I love mine, I use it all the time, and I'll include a link to it in my Amazon pick of the week in the description down below. I should mention that I'm using Midwest Products Cork Roadbed. This is a common product that most will be familiar with. It comes cut most of the way through at an angle in the middle. As you pull the two halves apart, the angle leaves the bevel for the outside edges of the roadbed. So you line up the straight edge of the cork on the center line of the track. As I glued down the cork, I tacked it in place with push pins until the glue dried. It's also a good idea to stagger the joints between the sections to help avoid vertical bumps in the roadbed. At the location of turnouts, I cut the roadbed to fit the diverging route. I tried to get these angles as close as I could, but if they are not absolutely perfect and you have some small gaps, they will fill with ballast later. You can also buy pre-cut pads for your turnouts to make this step easier if you prefer. I continued this process until all of the roadbed was installed. I then let it set for a few hours until the glue had hardened, and when it had, I removed the push pins. Using a sanding block with medium grit sandpaper, I sanded the roadbed to remove any bumps or imperfections on the surface, as well as the rough edges along the bevels. I took extra care sanding where the new roadbed was joining the older roadbed on the existing portion of the layout to make sure I had a good smooth transition. Where the main line enters the helix, the roadbed needed to decline down to nothing, so I planed several inches of the cork with a Stanley Sureform tool, then sanded it smooth and vacuumed up the dust.
Before installing any track, I built a couple of sub-assemblies of turnouts at the workbench. I like to do this kind of work at the bench when I can, as it's easier to get into the tight spaces within the turnouts to do soldering, as well as to align the turnouts in this place where everything is in a controlled environment. In this case, I had an assembly of four turnouts and a short piece of track that formed a crossover and two diverging tracks, as well as another crossover using two turnouts. I will be installing switch machines for these mainline turnouts, so I needed to prepare the turnouts for that. These are Pico turnouts, which have a spring wire on the throw bar that holds the points firmly in place. These spring wires need to be removed to allow for free movement of the throw bar so the switch machine can throw them easily. You remove the spring wire from the bottom of the turnout with a pair of fine needle nose pliers. Simply grab the wire and give it a gentle tug. I used a number 17 chisel type blade to remove the tie plate detail from the last tie on each of the routes through the switch to allow room for rail joiners to be installed. In the inner space between the diverging route and the through route at the diverging end, I simply cut away the piece of plastic tie between these rails using a downward cut with a number 17 blade. I repeated all of these steps on every turnout that I was installing. On the crossover, I needed a short section of track between the two diverging ends of the turnouts to get the spacing correct. For this, I like to use small pieces of sectional track rather than cut such small sections of flex track. The sectional track are solid pieces and they leave less room for error. I don't want the unrealistic U-shaped tie pieces on the ends, so I cut them away and remove them. While I had the turnouts at the bench, I went ahead and installed rail joiners on every rail. I would not be using all of these rail joiners yet, but they're easier to install here than they are after the turnouts are installed on the layout. Those joints where I would be working at the bench, I assembled as I installed the rail joiners. Next, it was time to solder the joints in the subassembly. I applied a bit of liquid flux to each joint, made sure I had a good, clean, well-tinned soldering iron tip, then heated the joint and applied a small amount of solder. Take great care to make sure that your joints are straight. You'll be glad that you did later. I do all of my soldering on the outside of the rails. As long as you don't over apply the solder, once the track is painted, you'll never see them. The risk of interfering with the wheel flanges is too great for me to want to solder on the inside of any rail joints. I used my NMRA gauge to make sure that all of the track joints were still in proper gauge. If any solder gets on the tops of the rails, I clean it up with a fine file, then use a steel washer glued to a piece of plywood to burnish the rails where I filed them to heal any scratches that were left behind. When all of the soldering on the assembly was complete, I cleaned up any flux that was left behind with denatured alcohol and an old toothbrush. Flux on the rails will inhibit adhesion of paint when you paint and weather your track. I repeated this whole process on the other crossover assembly. I took my turnout assemblies back to the layout and marked where the holes needed to be drilled for the switch machine actuating rods. I used the pre-drilled holes in the throw bars of the turnouts for the actuating rods. I try to use the side farthest from view if possible but sometimes track arrangement doesn't allow this. I used a fine tipped Sharpie. Holding the turnout exactly in place, I put the fine tip through the hole in the throw bar and moved it back and forth the full length of travel to mark the width of the travel of the throw bar. I then made a cross mark in the exact center of that line. This cross mark is the exact center of the hole that I needed to drill. 
I marked every turnout in the assembly, making sure the assembly was perfectly positioned so my holes would all be aligned. I then drilled a one quarter inch hole at each of these marks, then vacuumed up the sawdust and sanded the surface smooth. I also marked the position of the frogs. I glue my turnouts down only with a spot of adhesive under the frog. These marks will help me know where to put that adhesive. Again, I repeated this whole process for the crossover at the other end as well. Finally, it was time to start laying track. I started with a track that comes through the backdrop out of the helix. This section of track connects directly to that large assembly of turnouts that we just completed. Alignment here was critical, so I took extra care in measuring, cutting, and assembling the track. I cut the track to length with rail nippers. If you read the instructions that come with rail nippers, you'll learn that because of the difference in geometry, HO scale track should be cut horizontally, but N scale track should be cut vertically. Rail nippers are side cutters, so they have a straight side on the outside and a beveled edge on the inside. Be careful to use the straight side toward the track section that you intend to use and that your cutters are perpendicular to the rail. Otherwise, you will malform the end of your rail, making installing rail joiners more difficult. After cutting the rail, use a file to clean up the lip that is left from the cut on the head and foot of the rail and make a micro bevel on the sides of the foot. Again, this will aid in installing rail joiners and leave a smoother joint in the end. When the joiners were installed and I was happy with the alignment of everything, I pinned the track in place and soldered the track to the assembly. I used the same method that I had at the workbench. I love this little makeup mirror for helping me to see as I work on the back side of rails where I cannot otherwise see. Next, I glued the track in place. For this, I used simple latex caulk. I like to use gray because it blends with my ballast, but ultimately you should never see it anyway. I applied a small bead down the center of the roadbed, then smoothed it with a putty knife. You need to leave just enough caulk to hold the track firmly in place, but not enough to allow it to squeeze up to the level of the tops of the ties. I also applied a small dot at each frog. When I put the track into the adhesive and aligned it properly, I pinned it in place with push pins until the caulk cured. From here, I continue to lay track down the line. Straight full joints are easy. Just prepare and solder the joint, and glue down the track, and keep going. I used a straight edge to get my tangent sections truly straight. Curved sections are only slightly more challenging. Pre-curve the section of track, making sure that the rails where your first joint will be remain aligned with one another. Prepare and solder the joint, then glue your track down around the curve. If you have to have a joint in the middle of a curve, I recommend soldering the two rails together straight before laying the curve to avoid a kink in the joint. You'll need to remove a couple ties from each side of the joint when you do this to allow your rail joint to move and adjust as you curve the track as you lay it. Where I tied into the existing layout, there was a turnout on which one of the rail joints had come loose. Rather than try to repair this turnout in place, I simply removed it and replaced it with a new one. The old turnout I will repair and clean up at the workbench and use for one of my industrial sidings. I hate having to install very small joints of track, but sometimes it is unavoidable. This was one of those times as my turnout and my new track lacked about two inches of meeting. Here I cut a scrap of flex track and filled the gap and soldered everything in place. You will note that I didn't talk about insulated joints through this process. I will come back and cut insulated joints between the electrical blocks later and I'll cover that process in another video. With all of my track assembled and only one solder joint to complete, 
I glued the last of my main line down as I had done before. I also didn't talk about curves and easements in this video. You should get your curves and easements aligned when you draw your track plan onto the sub roadbed. If you do, simply laying track along the center line should have everything perfectly in place. I made a video previously about drawing curves, easements, and super elevation, and I'll link it in an end screen at the end of this video as well. With all of my track glued down and aligned, I made my last cut to that filler piece of track and soldered the last joint on this section of track. And with that, I could run my first test train. Now this entire section is running right now off of the power drawn from the track at each end. It will need to have feeder wires installed for electrical reliability, but that's a project for another day. Well, it is awesome to be able to run trains again from my lower deck around through the new section and up the helix. And in just a few days, I'm going to be laying the track on the main line on the upper deck connecting the helix to the existing layout at uh, Wichita Falls. And then once again, I'll be able to run trains over the entire length of my layout. And I can't wait. Like I said earlier, it's been almost a year since I've been able to do that. So I'm very excited about that. Of course, coming down the road, I'm going to have to actually wire all of this track that I put in today. I've still got the industrial lead to put in and all of the industry tracks along the lower deck, as well as the tracks that go into buoy and a couple of industries on the upper deck. Lots of track laying still to do, lots of wiring and other things, as well as cutting insulated gaps in this track to, uh, to uh, divide the, the various electrical blocks. And I'll bring all of that to you as I do you, show you exactly how I do it, and give you some tips that'll help you as you do similar projects on your layout. Well, as I said during the video, I've got some great links in the end cards in just a moment to both uh, how I transferred the track plan onto this part of my layout, as well as how I lay out the curves, easements, and super elevation. And those are very helpful videos. Be sure and check those out at the end of this one. And be sure and check out that Amazon pick of the week that I mentioned in the description down below, as well as all the other great links that are there just for you. Well, if you'd like to see some more Model Railroad content right now, Check out those links on your screen, and be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great model railroad videos, and I look forward to seeing you there. Tim Lizzie?